Julio Rodriguez is one of the most fun talents in baseball and has a long career ahead of him at only 22 years old, but today I'm resetting him to a zero overall and our job is to get him back to 99 overall and into the Hall of Fame. I realized very quickly that this would be a tough challenge because every stat is zero and making good plays is the only way to get better, but I don't even think he can hit a baseball. Julio needed to get lucky if he wanted his first hit and even though it took a while, this weak grounder managed to sneak through for a single, then a walk in the same inning let Julio score his first run ever. This is progress, but we have a long way to go because in this video, J-Rod needs to reach 99 overall, make an all-star game, win a World Series, win an MVP, and make the Hall of Fame. So to make this challenge work, we were going to need some upgrades because Julio is obviously really bad. Thankfully, we get to spin this wheel anytime Julio has a good game, and this win against the Angels was his first, earning him 50 upgrade points. I boosted some of his hitting ratings, and he was up to a whopping 7 overall. These boosts paid off immediately as this soft opposite field liner got off the ground and cleared the infield. However, this wasn't the end of his success as Julio hit the ball even further on his second at bat as this one dropped into left center. He wasn't hitting the ball hard yet and was still a huge liability in the field, but Julio's first multiple hit game earned him another upgrade and it was very fitting that he earned a contact boost to put his overall into the double digits. While we're gonna need to improve in the field, our bat will be the key to earning more spins from the wheel, especially as Julio breaks more milestones like this one as he sent this pitch into the gap. Julio's RBI got the Mariners on the board and it sparked a huge rally. Unfortunately for him, Julio Julio was pinch hit for, but this ended up being the right decision as his teammate lined a walk-off home run. Julio was probably offended, but he still had a blast celebrating the win and enjoyed a 10-point boost to all hitting stats. That was his most important upgrade yet, and he was up to 18 overall. However, we won't complete the challenges in this video with Julio alone. We needed to turn the Mariners into a god squad, and while we were tied for first in our division, our team was pretty mid. I started this rebuild by dumping some high veteran contracts for talented young prospects, and then started upgrading our infield with guys who hit well in MLB The Show. We entered this series against the A's with a brand new lineup, but of course, we still needed Julio to keep improving. He still hadn't gotten any fielding upgrades, and it was getting tough to watch. Thankfully, this didn't matter much, as this became another multi-hit game, and our new squad got the win. As Julio improves his skills, it's gonna be even more difficult to earn upgrades, but it was encouraging to see him drive this double into the opposite field gap in our next game. However, he faced a huge test with the bases loaded. Julio had a chance to break the tie, and while he blooped this one into the outfield, the second baseman somehow chased it down and saved the game. This was a really important play because the A's scored two runs, but Julio redeemed himself in the ninth inning with a drive to the gap for his first two-double game. While his teammates couldn't score him, the A's were a great team for Julio to show out against, and the wheel blessed us with plus 20 to all hitting stats. We need to get some fielding and speed boost eventually, but I can't complain about jumping all the way up to 34 overall, especially when Julio has been awful this season with no dingers, four RBIs, and a 500 OPS. We were in a division series against the Rangers, and I really thought this could have been Julio's first dinger. Texas had taken the division lead, so this was a really important set of games, but they abused my lack of speed in center. We were tied 2-2 in the fifth, and Julio needed to make up for his poor fielding, and not only was this the hardest hit of the video against Jacob deGrom, but it actually went for extra bases. That play alone was worth another upgrade as we took the lead, but Julio wouldn't stop there, picking up another multi-hit game against one of baseball's best teams. Julio had a lot to do with this win, and his reward was a 50-point stat boost. This meant we could finally upgrade his speed, and he was quickly becoming a decent hitter. We were fighting for the division lead, and we had to get through the Yankees, but Julio was emerging as a really reliable bat as he rocketed this third inning double. Once again, though, Julio would be tested with the bases loaded. Despite not hitting as well against lefties, Julio sent this one deep enough to score a runner on the sacrifice fly to help us win this one. This was a very important series, and it looked like Julio was showing up at the right time as he lined another extra base hit to cushion our lead. Even at 40 overall, he was a big reason we won these two games. Julio needed some fielding boosts if he wanted to become a 99 overall, and this is a good start as we could put 5 points into every stat and climb 7 overall. He was still the worst overall player on the whole team, but at least his OPS was almost up to 600. Even with the improvements to our team, we were still 9 games back in our division and would be put to the test against the second place Astros. Our bats started strong and the bases were loaded for Julio Rodriguez, however with 2 outs, he once again failed to come up in the clutch. This was disappointing, but we can't expect much from a 40 overall player and he responded with a base hit in the fifth. The single helped spark a two-run rally, and Julio wasn't going to miss another chance to advance a runner in scoring position, as some help from our team would give us the lead, the win, and another plus five boost to all stats. Julio was 53 overall at the break, and was obviously not going to make the All-Star game, but I did want to make a run for the World Series, trading a year of Teoscar Hernandez for a much younger Kerry Carpenter, and wanted to trade for one of the best offensive catchers in the whole game in William Contreras. Obviously, this isn't supposed to be realistic at all, and this game's trade 
trade logic is almost as crazy as the fact that over 90% of you who watch my YouTube videos aren't subscribed. These moves made our lineup better this year and long term as we won our first game out of the break. I had still not hit a home run with Julio Rodriguez, but it was looking very possible now that his hitting ratings were helping him consistently hit for extra bases. Even without home runs, our team was finding its groove offensively, and Julio added another hit to a great win. We were still on pace to make the wild card, and a J-Rod breakout would definitely get us there. He had struggled with the bases loaded this season, but down one against the Red Sox, he delivered when his team needed him most, driving this one high and deep to left and over the fence for a grand slam. Great timing for my first home run with Julio, and the biggest moment of his whole career as he helped the Mariners get a huge win and earned another 50 upgrade points. Julio was on good pace to become 99 overall, and we would have another huge challenge against the division-leading Astros. There was a noticeable gain in Julio's confidence as he was absolutely locked in on his first triple of the video. Beating the Astros would show our team that we could perform in the playoffs, so Julio and the offense stayed on the gas and got the big win. The second game of the series was deadlocked at zero, but Julio continued to produce against good pitchers, breaking through Justin Verlander for a huge eighth inning double. The Mariners decided to pinch run for Julio, and this proved to be the right decision that earned us the win. While his bat was looking impressive, Julio is just not the same player without his speed, so I was very thankful to receive 100 upgrade points from the magic wheel. Getting his speed up to 60 and improving his arm was crucial, while his bat also got more upgrades to bring the Mariners to a very nice 69 wins. We were in a good position for the third wild card spot with a month to go, however we needed Julio to produce down one against the Angels, and he took this pitch the other way to score a runner from second and had another double. While Julio had more speed, he still wasn't fast enough to be a good defender, so the Angels took the lead in the sixth. However, this wouldn't last long as Jared Kelnick drove this pitch deep and Julio knew for a fact that it was gone as this dinger helped us win the game. The Mariners were hot as the playoffs approached and blowouts against teams like the Dodgers helped them secure the third wildcard spot. Our season finale against the Rangers could be a playoff preview and Julio wanted to make a statement in the final game of the season with a no doubt blast and a bat flip. We lost this game but Julio's improvement had me optimistic that this team could make a run as he got his OPS up to 620 and had nearly 50 RBIs. This was pretty good improvement for a guy who started at zero overall and Julio would get even better for the playoffs with a 10 point boost to his hitting stats. He was up to 74 overall and was no longer the Mariners worst player. We were in the wild card against the Orioles and Julio wanted to cushion our one run lead but he just got under this one and flew out. However he would have another chance in the top of the ninth and despite being late on this pitch he dropped in a base hit to score a teammate and help the Mariners win game one. Julio wanted to show that his hot streak was not a fluke and help his team sweep Baltimore as he rocketed this double into the gap in left center to break a tie. He was willing to do whatever it took to win, even injuring the other team. Julio had a chance to ice this game with loaded bases in the top of the ninth, and while he failed in these situations throughout the year, he came through when it mattered, clearing the bases on this double and sending the Mariners to the next round. He was very deserving of player of the game in that win, and hopefully a five-point boost to all stats will help him stay sharp in the ALDS against the Twins. We took game one, but it was far too early to count out Minnesota, as they took a huge lead in game two. Seattle rallied back, and Julio had the chance to take the lead for his team, but couldn't send it deep enough. This was a missed opportunity as Minnesota would take the lead and then the game. This was the worst time for Julio to fall into a slump, but he couldn't deliver with runners in scoring position, and Minnesota took the series lead. We were facing elimination, but Julio wouldn't go down without a fight, launching a no-doubter on his first at-bat to give the Mariners the lead. This was a thrilling, high-scoring game as the Twins led 8-5, and down to their last three outs, Julio launched an RBI single. We needed our team to come through, but Carpenter struck out and a Contreras flyout ended our season. It sucked to watch the Twins celebrate, but we knew that Julio and our young team would be back. We added a Med Rosario in free agency, and Julio entered the year at 81 overall. We came into year two as the fifth best team in all of baseball, and I was extremely optimistic about getting some of these video goals completed this season, especially when the season started in the best possible way, with Julio smashing Senga's pitch out of the park. That home run helped us get the win, and this has to be the year Julio hits 99 overall, as he started the season with a 10 point boost to all stats. That was one of the best upgrades he could have gotten and he was now a 90 overall. I don't think the league was expecting Julio to break out after a bad season, but he was easily the Mariners best offensive player and his three hits led a Mariners beat down of the Toronto Blue Jays. However, Julio needed to prove he could come through in big situations and this double against the Tigers made him the tying run with his team down one. Down to their final out, JP Crawford's single cleared the infield and Julio's speed upgrades helped him score all the way from second base. Thanks to Julio spark, the Mariners were able to walk this game off in the 10th inning. The Texas Rangers were the defending champs, and they could be the biggest threat to our division chances, and while Julio's first inning double made a
this statement, Texas dropped us to seven and six. We could not afford to be mediocre in a stacked AL West. So Julio kept the big plays coming, smoking this 0-2 pitch for a dinger in their next game, and then went the other way for his second hit of the ball game. This one went back and forth and was tied three to three in the ninth as Julio picked up another hit. But as we've seen so many times before, our team failed to score him, giving Texas the chance to walk it off. While Julio had improved in the field, he still wasn't quite fast enough to catch up to this pop-up, and this ended up handing the M's another loss against Texas. Rodriguez did hit really well in that series, so thankfully he earned an upgrade, except this time he didn't because the wheel landed on no boost. It seemed like the Mariners were trying to waste Julio Rodriguez's hot start to the season, but his first inning home run against the Angels tied the game and helped the Mariners break out of their losing streak. They were still a game below 500, but could take advantage of this series against the Oakland A's. I thought this deep drive from Julio would drop, but the outfielder caught up to it, and Julio would later miss a bases loaded chance to extend the lead. This was not his best game, but he did manage to get on base with this eighth inning double to help the Mariners ice this game. Julio had abused the Angels this season, and this game was no different as he broke an eighth inning tie with his 12th home run of the year. However, Julio was not done as he capitalized on a ninth inning at bat and ended up scoring every single run in this win. As we all know, Julio's fielding still needed some work, and it was finally getting a boost with 20 points to all stats. Just like that, Julio was up to a 98 overall while enjoying a breakout year with a 331 average and over 1100 OPS. This was an awesome start to the season, but Julio was only in second for MVP and All-Star voting. Making an All-Star game and winning MVP would each complete a challenge, so it was very important that Julio showed out before the All-Star break. Seattle was down to their last strike against Toronto, and this could be Julio's chance to solidify himself as the MVP front runner. Facing a 3-2 count, Julio was going to leave no doubt about this one, launching this moonshot to deep left center. The clutchest play of Julio's entire career gave Seattle the lead and eventually the win and earned Julio player of the game. Seattle was back up to 29 and 23 and were looking to keep their momentum going as Julio finally got up to 99 overall. After that, the Mariners won eight games in a row and the West was a three-team race just in time for a series against the Astros. Julio helped us take the division lead and he wasn't about to let us lose it easily, going yard on his first at-bat. This sparked the rest of the offense and Julio loaded the bases with a single before being scored by his team. This was a fun game in Seattle and it was not over as Rodriguez ran up the score with this no doubt shot and the bat flip. The Mariners embarrassed the Astros and made this series against the Rangers much more interesting. However, Julio was intentionally walked and the Rangers would take the division lead at the break. Julio's hot streak did help him make the all-star game, but he definitely needed some more RBIs if he wanted to win MVP. We fell two games below Texas out of the break in time for another matchup with them that wasn't looking good in the sixth inning. However, our team found a way to bring this one back and Julio was able to get aboard with an infield single, but we grounded into a double play and lost another one to the Rangers. We were falling out of the division race, but I realized that there was a way to help our team and hurt Texas, making this trade for Josh Jung. We had to do whatever it takes to complete this challenge, especially with Julio gaining ground in the MVP race. This was a close game against Cincinnati, but the Josh Jung signing paid off immediately as his single advanced Julio all the way to third base, who would later score the first run of the game. That was the first score for either side, but Julio wanted to deliver the dagger as this deep shot to right center field became his 40th bomb of the year and got us the win. J-Rod's brilliant season helped the Mariners win 97 games and more importantly, won him the MVP. We were back in the wild card, fittingly against the team that gave us the toughest time this year. The Mariners got out to a quick lead and Julio's two hits helped them take game one and they dominated Texas in their next game to move on to the ALDS. The Rangers were one of the scariest teams in the playoffs, but we had to stay on the gas against the division winning Astros as Julio's first at-bat kept carrying deep and over the wall. It didn't look like he got much of that one, but Julio's 99 power definitely showed up there. However, any doubt about that home run would be erased in the eighth inning as this absolute moonshot put the cap on game one. Julio had the chance to break open game two, and while he hit this ball very hard, he just couldn't beat out the throw. He went hitless, but the rest of our bats really showed up and got us the win. We would sweep both of our division rivals if we won this elimination game, but Julio couldn't break the 1-1 tie. While he redeemed himself with the single in the fifth, our team failed to score him as we blew the lead and lost our first playoff game. I was really hoping this was just a bad game, but our offense was struggling to produce down one run. Julio needed to help the Mariners wake up in the seventh, and he came up with a big double with zero outs, but his team managed to strand him. We ended up taking the loss in one of the worst offensive games we've had in a while. The Astros' comeback forced a winner-takes-all game five, and this looked like a very good start from Julio, but he could not clear the fence. This game went back and forth and remained tied in the sixth. Then, Julio was looking to take the lead in the ninth, 
11th, as this double would give his team a chance. The Mariners couldn't score him last game, but a Josh Young grounder got him the third, and this absolutely ridiculous wild throw sent him home. Somehow, that's how this one would end, as the Astros had to be completely heartbroken watching the Mariners celebrate. Julio had never been to the ALCS, and it looked like the lights were a bit too bright early on. He needed to start a rally in the ninth, but couldn't come through as Seattle lost game one. However, the AL MVP showed everyone that he was the world's best player in the next game, turning on this high pitch and extending Seattle's lead. Julio had another hit in the eighth inning, and he would later score on a game ceiling Kerry Carpenter home run. Seattle was having an incredible run as the second wildcard team, and Julio was a big reason for that, but his team failed to score him when it mattered, and our pitching staff struggled to contain Tampa's offense as they retook the series lead. Julio had another extra base hit in game four, stretching this one all the way to third base, but just like in the other games, the Mariners wasted the opportunity. Our lack of offense allowed Tampa to get back into it, and they finally took the lead in extras. Julio nearly hit into a game-ending double play, but the game would end regardless on the very next play. I thought Seattle was going to win the World Series this season, but they were in danger of being eliminated in the ALCS. A blooping single helped Tampa score three runs, but Julio was looking to cut into their lead with this deep bomb to the gap that he turned into an RBI triple. Julio would score, and this was suddenly a one-run game. Tampa would get a run back, but Rodriguez was playing out of his mind, and another extra base hit would help the Mariners survive. This series was tied after the Mariners won a blowout, as Julio scored another run. Up 3 to nothing. Julio did what he had done best in this playoff series, coming up with another double to help Seattle complete a 3-1 comeback and miraculously win the American League. Seattle was in the World Series, but they were taking on the Braves, and this roster was unlike anything they had to face to get here. We could not afford any mistakes if we wanted to beat Atlanta, but Julio was just a bit late on this fastball, and it may have cost his team a home run. Atlanta went up 2 to nothing, and Julio finally got his first hit of the World Series, and to my surprise, his team actually managed to send him home. Seattle tied the game at two apiece, but this missed opportunity to score runners on base helped Atlanta take game one, and the next game was just as close, as the Braves led one to nothing until Julio came through with a single. Obviously, Atlanta wasn't going to give the MVP a chance to take the lead, and we gave up another run to make it two to one. Down to our last out, Julio did manage to get aboard with a single, but was again stranded in another Atlanta win. Every single game of the series had been competitive, and game three was no different, as Julio tied it one to one. The Braves answered right back with another run, but so did Julio as a soft opposite field hit stayed fair and bounced into the seats for an automatic double. Rodriguez had been phenomenal against Atlanta, and he collected his third hit of the game before the lack of clutch bats in our lineup costed us a run and the game. We were just one game away from being swept in the World Series, and the Braves broke through our three-run lead. Then our pitcher got into trouble in the seventh and gave up the leading run. With a man on third, all Julio needed to do was keep this ball on the ground to tie the game, and he came through as we would avoid the sweep. Survival seemed unlikely, as we had to overcome another three-run deficit, but Julio couldn't get to this ninth inning hit. This allowed Atlanta to break the tie, and Julio's magic did not work on this flyout, as the Mariners' run ended against the Atlanta Braves. This was somehow even more painful than last year, but I wasn't going to let anything stop Julio from winning a World Series. We had a ton of money to spend, so unlike the Mariners in real life, I hit free agency hard, bringing in Corbin Burns, Juan Soto, and even Pete Alonso to create undoubtedly the best team in baseball. The last move I made was flipping a regressing Luis Castillo for a young talent in Bobby Miller, and our God Squad jumped out to a big division lead in the first half of the season. Julio was having another MVP caliber season with 81 RBIs at the break, so it was no surprise that we won a record 117 games. There was no doubt that a team with two MVP finalists and two Cy Young finalists would be in the World Series, as we were looking to redeem ourselves this time against the Dodgers. A World Series win would look really good on Julio's Hall of Fame resume, but would also really please me as a Mariners fan. We were down two with Pete Alonso up, and while he did manage to get a hit, this grounder only scored one run, and LA would take the opener. After two straight MVP seasons, Julio Rodriguez wanted this win more than anyone, and he went the other way on a double that carried right over the defender's head. That hit unfortunately led to no runs, and then he couldn't make it to this one hopper in deep center. LA scored that inning, and Julio was up to the plate down two. Facing an 0-2 count, the game was in his hands, and he would not disappoint, launching this one the other way with just enough power to carry over the right field fence. That opposite field home run took the lead for Seattle and helped them even the series. Thankfully, our pitching was dominant in games three and four, and we were one win away from not wasting Julio's MVP season as he loaded the bases. I felt like our offseason additions were kind of overkill, but I was glad we had better bats who could produce in clutch situations 
innings as Pete Alonso scored two runs. Then with the lead, Julio wanted in on the action, absolutely crushing this one, hitting the bat flip, and watching this fly out of the park along with the Dodgers' comeback chances. We turned the Seattle Mariners into a god squad with zero overall Julio Rodriguez and finally won him his first World Series. Julio would go on to win three more MVPs in four more World Series before retiring at 42 years old after an absolutely historic career with nearly 2,000 RBIs and over 600 home runs, closing out his Hall of Fame career.